Now we welcome Advocate Samarjit Patnai, who's partner with Taranjava Lion Company. Uh, he will give us some insights uh, and also speak about Justice Sanjay Kishan Paul. Uh, good to see you, Samarjit. And uh, straight to the question. Uh, Good evening. Uh, Justice Call uh, is uh, debating office to take up a new career. Very soon, I think we will see him on the arbitration, uh, uh, in a sense, work profile. But uh, when we reflect on uh, his life and career as a judge and before that, uh, what do you would you want to say about him? Uh, good evening, uh, Tarun, first of all. Uh, well, it's a privilege rather than honor for me. <clears throat> that I could come to your show today to <clears throat> share my thoughts, my interaction, my initial uh, years of practice experiences that I've incidentally had in one of his courts. <clears throat> so uh, I still remember uh, Justice Call probably was uh, in the Delhi High Court around 2002-2003 it was. Uh, and I had just joined the bar, I had just joined the profession. And in those days, as young lawyers, we generally used to go to various courts and see and observe what proceedings are happening, how the judges are uh, reacting, what interesting cases are happening. Having come from a smaller city to, a, to courts in Delhi, what's happening in these courts? So I, incidentally, I then one day walk up to Justice Call's court. And as a new entrant, I took almost the back bench to sit and observe what's happening. <clears throat> and this was Delhi High Court. Then I noticed <clears throat> Justice Call, he, the way he was encouraging each and every young lawyer, I mean, the lawyers appeared to be hung to me, so I could figure out that they are young lawyers. And one or two specific instances where certain lawyers had come up to take a Passover, seek an adjournment. In more than two to three cases, that one specific day, at least I have seen him tell them not to simply come and take a Passover, not to simply come and take an adjournment. And he used to tell them that you tell us what the fact is. It's okay. Whatever you have, you know of the matter, give us... Uh, apprises of the matter. The matter is listed today. It should not just go as a wasted date. And I think that's 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 the kind of approach and philosophy that Justice Call has carried it throughout. I mean, and in fact, it's also on record that you know Justice Call had been instrumental in getting the adjournment uh, process out of the system. He was always against adjournments. So, in fact, he started this uh, muhim kind of a thing against adjournment in courts. And he used to say that every time a matter is listed, it should be heard. It's listed for that date. Make sure that it is heard on that date. So, I noticed him that day <clears throat> and I instantly developed a liking for him. And believe me, Tarun, at least two to three days in a week, if I'm in the high court, I would make sure that every day, I used to go to his court and at least observe two to three matters that has been taken up. So that was the kind of effect that he used to have on, you know, youngest of youngest lawyers who used to we used to join at that point of time. Now, uh, uh, in, in high court, in his high court uh, tenure, probably, I didn't have the opportunity of though appearing too much before him. But of course, when he came to the Supreme Court, as a judge of the Supreme Court, before that he held the, he was in Delhi High Court, then he was the chief of the Punjab and Haryana High Court, then he moved to uh, Chennai High Court as the chief. Then when he came to the Supreme Court, I have had n number of opportunities to appear before him, to assist senior counsels in matters before him. And I think over the span over the duration he's actually been part of quite a few uh, very very prominent cases and has delivered uh, uh, very important judgments throughout his entire tenure i mean uh, 
most of this most of his i mean he's known he's known as a pioneer of uh, you know civil liberty a, a, a judge who's always pro uh, bail pro liberty no no unnecessarily arrest he's laid down a lot of laws and procedures in his judgments that that i'll refer to and follow with regard to policing but apart from that in general i think he's also dealt with a lot of such important matters during his career and a few that i could remember in the recent pa uh, recent uh, years quite close to his uh, you no know, retirement or technically i must say justice Co <laughs> retires on the 25th so technically is not but uh, since the supreme court is on our vacation <clears throat> so as i was telling you earlier also so he stressed the importance of seeking no adjournments and in fact <clears throat> he used to tell lawyers that i feel that you no know, adjournment culture has become so prevalent and 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 he used to say in open court that he does not feel right about the fact and that is that is so much so for coming from a uh, you know judge who was who was who was such an experienced judge and also being on the other side of the bar he started his practice in the uh, you know delhi high court of course and uh, justice call i would say and i would remember as a human being he was very forward thinking you know he had lot of uh, regard for culture for art and i think if i remember clearly there was one uh, justice call was heading one of the benches of the delhi high court at that point of time where a very important case related to uh, the famous uh, pa uh, painter uh, mf hussain had uh, had come up uh, before him and then in this matter uh, mf hussain was accused of painting and portraying uh, mother india so mother india in a you know in a naked form and you know that it made lot of hues and cries in the country to the extent that probably uh, mf hussain went to hiding for a, for some time and that is when this petition had come up uh, i was again new to the profession at that point of time so i remember there was a lot of hue and cry about this matter so so this matter had come up in a quashing petition and at that point of time with so much of national uproar justice call stood up to what he felt was correct he was not only large hearted large minded but he really appreciated the artistic expression and the freedom and the liberty and the scope that should be given to uh, given for artistic expression and he quashed he quashed the uh, complaint he quashed the fir so that was that was when he was the judge of the uh, delhi high court <clears throat> similarly i think uh, this was when justice call again became the chief of the uh, chennai high court i guess that was i don't remember exactly the name of the writer but there was this writer uh who was uh he had written something and then there was a lot of accusation against him and there were charges against him for uh, uh voyeurism now this again was a very extraordinary kind of a case we don't come across these kind of cases every day and now this matter was also before him and i would like to quote this because this is very interesting so justice call while you know striking off the charges and offense against this writer it was a, he was a, ta a tamil writer and i quote he says in his judgment that the choice to read is always with the reader if you don't like the book throw it away there is no compulsion to read a book literally tastes may vary what is right and acceptable to me may not be right and acceptable to others yet the right to write is unhindered and should go unhindered so this was the kind of judgments that he has passed <clears throat> and these are you know some of the judgments which are way beyond you know and and it really needs lot of courage because why i'm saying it needs lot of courage is that's what he probably emphasized also <clears throat> during his uh, uh, last meeting the retirement meeting that we had 
so justice uh, call was very uh, he very emphatic emphatically stated that you know what is the need of the r for judges is to be courageous and and these kind of judgment that is passed clearly shows that he was now Thanks. apart from this he's also been in several other various uh, high profile uh, cases where he's delivered judgments one one such case which was obviously against the uh, the government rather the, the the union government had filed this uh, and this was for increase of compensation by thousand of crores uh, which was being sought to be paid by the current companies who is which is taken over the union carbide and the uh, and the logic was that the government wanted to enhance the compensation for the bhopal uh, tragedy victim gas tragedy victims no he he's dealt with it in a very though though that was not allowed but he's dealt with it also very very because it and one side there was a situation where it was related to compensation to the tragedy victims and at the other side it was you know not allowing it so it's a very balanced judgment if one reads it's a detailed judgment it's a very balanced judgment and that's why i say that you know and and he's somehow given his mind somewhere that and figured it out and said that you know as judges as judiciary we should not sit here to be you know either agents of the government any government may it be and we should do what is right what is correct what is equitable and that's how we have known him and we and and that's why how he what is what is he has stood for throughout so so this is how this is how he he was this is how in public also he was he would meet you very very uh, affectionately even if you introduce i have introduced quite a few times my juniors to him in you know in, in a in a public gathering it would be very nice you'd ask well, where are you working how where have you done your law and he he was i mean there's lot of inspiration that we have drawn and and you know i i'm sure that even lawyers who would now come into the bar will still keeping uh, you know keep uh, drawing the inspiration from out of what he is uh, left <laughs> now tarun i'll probably want to uh, discuss a bit about his way he's looked at and dealt with at the uh, criminal pa criminal uh, bail bail liberty uh, the, you know the the, the, the Uh, upholder of uh, citizen liberty, <clears throat> because Justice Call, towards the end of his uh, tenure as the Supreme Court judge, also was in charge of the criminal roster for a long time, for a kind of considerate considerate time, I would say. And <clears throat> one of the one one of the most important uh, constitutional uh, matter also which he had dealt with, and this was I think again. Uh, a year or two after he became a supreme court judge that dealt with uh, the fundamental uh, rights whether right to privacy is part of the fundamental right or not now very nicely the judgment has been written and the bench has given right to liberty right to privacy as a recognition as a primary fundamental right and that is a right which has been asserted as a fundamental right on the citizens and is a, which is as a most important right of a citizen and the judgment says that it, this right has to be protected both against the state and non state actors so whether against whether it's for the state or a private individual it should be protected against both so that is that is another very very important uh, judgment that he has delivered <laughs> apart from this he has also been part of the bench which has uh, looked into a very important another very important aspect of uh, law now under the hindu marriage act there isn't a provision where irreparable breakdown of marriage is considered as a ground now many many times in matrimonial disputes the matters 
there is a clear irrep irreparable breakdown of marriage. The judge can see it. The family court judge can see it. But there isn't a ground. So how do you how do you grant the divorce? So these matters come up, and one such matter came up <clears throat> before uh, Justice Call, and the bench very rightly dealt with that matter and said that under the provisions of uh, law, even though there isn't any specific uh, rule or a specific uh, law under the uh, act. However, Supreme Court under its inherent under its inherent powers, the, the, the judgment said about two important things. Under the inherent powers, the Supreme Court can not only sumoto consider that yes, there is an irreparable uh, breakdown and hence grant divorce, which any other court does not have a power to. And secondly, the mandatory period of six months waiting between the two motions that's the first motion and the second motion of a divorce can also be done away with under the extraordinary powers of the supreme court so this i think is also another very very important uh, decision because clearly clearly the indication was that the government should also bring some kind of an amendment and uh, in in recent uh, times i uh, the, the law commission has also been discussing this, that this should also become a part and a ground of uh, the divorce proceedings uh, within the Hindu Marriage Act. Now let us come to his, I, I, I just <laughs> met, uh, you know, took a different uh, view and went back from where I was coming to about his bail approach. Now, one of the very important matters with Justice Call the bench dealt with was, and this was in this was quite recent in 2021. So this was Siddharth versus State. So in Siddharth versus State was kind of a binding law and the criminal jurisprudence, where it clearly says that if a person, the police is arresting a person, and there is no reason or no ground for the police to say or to demonstrate that either the accused in question is not cooperating with the investigation or he has not been arrested during the course of investigation, then for the purpose of filing of charge sheet or at the time of filing of charge sheet, there is no requirement of arrest of that person. Now, the law of arrest in our country has been used and misused both ways. Now, this judgment of Siddharth, like most of the lawyers now, we quoted in uh, you know bail matters. This, this, this was, of course, an anticipatory bail matter. So in these, this laid down like a principle and the directions were given to all police stations that this, these are the principles and guidelines which needs to be followed. Subsequently, the same bench and Justice Call being part of the bench laid down a further important, uh, more further important guidelines in a follow-up judgment, which is the until judgment, Satinder Kumar until in a CBI matter. And there also, it was clearly further defined and laid down that if it is not a heinous crime, if it is not an offense where the punishment is, say for example, even an offense where the punishment is less than seven years, the Supreme Court said that if the offense is as a punishment of less than seven years, then there is no requirement of arrest until and unless again, there are reasons to say that the uh, accused is a uh, flight risk, uh, accused does not uh, cooperate, or there is some, some recovery to be done. But there is no reason why this arrest has to be done. And in the until judgment, several important guidelines for the first time were let down. And it was kind of a direction that all of these guidelines should be made in a form of a list and should be pasted in police stations as a, as a, as a principle and as a rule to be followed by each investigating officer, each arresting uh, officer. So that was another very important judgment that has been 
let down by uh, a bench headed by Justice Call. Now, <clears throat> this approach, this pro bail approach, now recently also we've seen and we've heard in many such judgments, even the Honorable Chief Justice has come very strongly in support of the principle that bail has to be a rule and jail has to be an exception. Now, I think this is where I was coming from and I had referred to that the boldness of Justice Call and the way he has you know, dealt with with uh, you know, dealing with cases, whether it is for the government, for an individual, for the sake of freedom, for the sake of uh, bail, for the sake of uh, you know liberty, as opposed to upholding the principles of law, has been very very balanced. And <clears throat> even all the recent judgments he's been part of are are clearly reflects his personality and the way he is. And I think I would again say that I've been really lucky to have, uh, you know, been part of those, uh, you know, those matters which have been referred to or has been dealt with his benches, even though in some of the matters are still pending and, you know, he retires and, uh, you know, he's, he'll not be passing uh, judgments on those orders, on those cases though. But I think, yes, that is how he has really influenced and made me, uh, you know, look up to him. And I've always found him, I've always considered him as one of our finest judges. And uh, we, I, I really wish him all the very best for his uh, uh, endeavors and for his uh, post-retirement plans. We'll, we'll, we'll really miss thank him. Thank you. That was, thank you so much. Uh, that was very informative experiential in that sense and you reflected and you shared so many anecdotes uh, appreciate your joining us uh, that was Samajit Patnayak uh, partner with Karajawal and company uh, and he shared uh, his insights and experiences and anecdotes about Justice Call. Thank you. Thank you so much.